Welcome to the Mindful Musings of Two Spiritual Mamas. We are Alicia and Shelby, here to share our 20 years of authentic friendship, life experiences, and acquired wisdom. Infused with love and intention, our episodes will inspire those who are ready to shift their soul path into alignment with its divine purpose. We will discuss alternative approaches to life's traditional pathways, leaving you with tools in your spiritual toolbox to navigate everyday moments. Knowing and embodying the empowered self on a daily basis is one of the most valuable practices you can adopt. Understanding that you are surrounded by a network of support, both physically and spiritually, will carry you into the next phase of your divine purpose. You are not alone on this journey. We recognize we're on a spiritual path, navigating our day-to-day lives. And in this podcast, we'll share with you our organic thoughts as we grow and blossom together. Welcome to episode 12 with Two Spiritual Mamas. I'm Alicia. And I'm Shelby. And today we are celebrating. We have had (laughs) over 500 downloads, and we want to authentically celebrate. We want to talk about what that means to truly honor and reflect back and 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 bring the joy it's it's spring and we are really (laughs) excited so we're gonna celebrate that (laughs) yes there's so much joy right now there's blue skies and 50 degree weather out here um but most importantly I think there's a lot of a lot of times that we do celebrate we high five we we have a beer with our friends or you know lately pick up a zoom chat and and chat it out, but how can we celebrate at a deeper level? How do we really dive in into our actions and our accomplishments and say to ourselves, good job, you know, because I, I just, I know personally, I am such a doer and such a motivated person that I'm like, okay, done next. And I don't stop to say, wait a second, girl. (laughs) you know what you just accomplished? Like that was huge. That took you a year or that took you four years to get to this point. Like, wait a second, pause. I'm not a good pauser, you know, (laughs) even our episode, um, our last episode, breathe. (laughs) It's such a good reminder. Yes. So pause and breathe and celebrate deeply. So Alicia, you have this super program that you are certified to lead and I've been a part of it a few times. Um, Tell us what uh, that program suggests we do to celebrate. Yes. I know if we've Listeners have heard us talk about it before. The soul coaching program that Denise Lynn started has so many great tools in how to live with a spiritual mindset, how to clear away some of the gunk and and really get to the juicy, good self-love and joy and and celebration of life Mm -hmm. and and really from a spiritual centered place. (laughs) And some of the tools in there really have you reflect back and look at the different turning points in your life where, where you did accomplish something really big. And, and when you did shift into a a big move or uh, a, a job, or you lost a job or you lost someone you love. And a lot of these turning points reflect back to us what our belief systems are. Our belief systems are so important and they come from these moments. And so writing them out, drawing them out, or even getting really creative, I think it's day nine in the 28-day program that you look at the meaning that you give your life. And one of the exercises is to create a spirit stick. And Mm. it is such a beautiful thing to see art come together, creativity. And I mean, even if you're not creative and you just want to write out a timeline, you could, you could do it linearly, or you can do it in a circle or in a spiral, uh, especially oh, if yeah. a theme comes up again and again. Love in the spiral. 
And I like the tree because you can look at the things in your life, the turning points that really grounded you into who you are and, and the limbs as, as ways to stretch and how you grew. So cool. Okay. We got to back up. Let's talk about the spirit stick for a second. (laughs) Um, This to me is, I haven't done it yet, but I'm super excited to do it. Um, in order to do the spirit stick, you want to get some feathers, some beads, some yarn, um, maybe some maybe paint, some shells, some paints, and you just you you know you're gonna put your family. Maybe you have a piece of yarn that has like I would have me and my three kids, and they would represent how close they are to my heart. They are on the same string, you know, or maybe. I would put them on their own strings because it represents, you know, they're all growing up at this point. So let me, I'm, I'm a walking active thinker right now. <laughs> <laughs> and I think you're imagining how you're going to build your spirit, spirit stick. My so spirit that's nice. stick. Yeah. How, Cause you know, my kids are, are definitely their own individuals. Um, and then, you know, I would add in when I moved to Vermont versus when I met you and it would be, it would definitely be linear. Um, but when I looked at that, It would represent accomplishment. It would represent joy. It would really, um, what I like, Denise Lynn, she says, every time you look at your stick, you reinforce a positive view of your past. And as a very, very self-critical person, this is what I would love to see more in my life is really celebrating, yeah, when I, when I made that shift, when I left that relationship or when I chose to open my business or when I moved to this different city, look what happened because of it. And, and just shed the, shed the doubt, the negativity and celebrate what came into my life, what came into your lives. Um, and I love that because it's textured. It's, it's got the elements of wood and the elements if you're using feathers and um, any type of bead, you know, that could be uh, stone or glass or clay. So it just brings in a mother earth into it. And I just love that idea. But you just brought up the tree and now I can't get over the tree idea. So let's talk about that a little bit more. So this might be a more canvassy, artistic um, yeah. giant piece of paper. Yeah. Um, you can and- use multiple color pens. You can uh, use different limbs to represent different parts of your family or different, like you said, if, if you made a move across the country, uh, stretch out that limb and all the things that came because of it and mm-hmm. create all these other branches off of a big limb like that. Or maybe you got married and divorced. And mm-hmm. what would you do with that limb? That limb might, you know, might need to it fall just, off. <laughs> you pruned. You pruned your tree. We we I have pruned. to prune our trees, people. <laughs> we have to. Um, but you know what's funny about that? Uh, I I'm going to say this wrong. Khalil Gibran. Is that how you say it? I think so. He does Khalil. a beautiful poem about. Um, I think it's the cypress and the oak, and it's like a marriage poem of how there's two trees side by side. You know, it's not one tree joining together. You're still uniquely individual, kind of like my, my children need their own string on my spirit stick. <laughs> yep, I like this. Making so, think. But yeah, um, I definitely love the idea of what has rooted you of, in your past. Um, and as we talked about in our episode previous to this, sometimes roots need to be uprooted. Sometimes an idea, I was actually just reading something today about it's okay to recognize that uh, a value or a mindset that you've had for so long, someone might bring it to your attention that it's a little bit skewed. And you're like, whoa, I never even thought of that as being skewed. It's just such, such my normal, like, it's okay you don't have to view yourself as a bigot or a racist or you just say, well, I thank you for bringing that to my awareness. I think that needs to be uprooted and composted (laughs) (laughs) and I'm going to plant a different kind of a root system over here. So yes, I love change. I love honoring. I love celebrating. Um, And like we always say, Alicia, everything is divinely orchestrated. So yes. every, everything that comes to us, every is- twist and turn, every surprise. And it, it's really exciting to go look back and see, mm-hmm. I mean, I love it when it pops up in my Facebook feed or my photo memories, 
what has happened and all the things I forgot to celebrate or forgot I did celebrate, but that was 10 years ago and <laughs> so much change. And I, I love the change too. There's so much growth in, in shaking things up and making a big move. I'm finally getting settled in my new home here with my partner and we're creating a new chapter. And we celebrated last night when we built our infrared sauna. Oh my God. Yes. <laughs> It was so nice <laughs> to finally get to sit there and be like, look what we created, what we've accomplished and, and what we've built. And it, it's brand new for both of us. So that was kind of fun. I, our lives are so hilarious. Like we mirror each other almost to the day. I had two friends come over yesterday who gave me a sauna. And so we talked about um, the wattage and stuff I don't know anything about, but you know, he was like, you're going to need this and this. I'm like, okay, I'll call my electrician. How funny. That's the same exact 24 hour <laughs> period. I love us. Yeah. It's so cool. Oh my goodness. Okay. So let's see. We're, we're reflecting, we're honoring. Um, yes. I want to echo you on the Facebook stuff that there's times that, that I laugh when I'll, there was some beautiful spiritual post or something that was really motivating that I posted eight years ago or 11 years ago. I'm like, Oh, hot dang. I, I had it going on back then. You know, <laughs> a lot of times I, I just bypass myself and think, Oh, you were a hot mess back then. You were just starting your business. Your kids were all under 10. You know, you had, I was trying to find a partner to be with and I, I was just a hot mess. And then I'm like, no, Shelby, you were parenting three children under 10. You were starting a business. <laughs> and, and it's like that positive reinforcement of, look what I've done. I'm through it. I'm in this present moment today. You know, I definitely don't want to say, let's go dwell on the past, but let's honor the past and, and support it and love it and thank it. And then be in this present moment. And it was fun to just hear you talk about that shift in your mindset. Because mm-hmm. you can be like, oh my God, I'm a hot mess and this is overwhelming <laughs> and this is crazy. I'm like, wah, you know, ah. <laughs> or yes. you can see like, okay, that's that's not the energy I want to remember myself as or bring into this moment and, and honor my, you know, that's, well, no, throw it out the window. Mm-hmm. Look at it like, okay, I honor the fact I was doing a amazing job at opening a business and Mm -hmm. parenting, single parenting, three kids under 10. That is amazing. Yeah. And, and honoring that part of you and then feel the shift. I felt it in my body, the (laughs) shift in you just seeing it from that other angle and, and how amazing that feels. Mm -hmm. And you know what I've done too? I've asked my kids and like, tell me, tell me some memories from, you know, back when we lived at the other house and they have such awesome memories. And here I am sitting inside of this. Oh, did they think I was such a crazy mom? I was never home at night because I was always coaching. And, and they're like, oh, that was the best. Yeah. Remember when we did this? And I'm like, oh, yay. Okay. Kids (laughs) are great like that. You know, and and this is my almost 20 year old son, like reflecting on, yeah. Remember when I used to take the yarn and I made a giant web in the whole house and we had to like step over it. And I was like, yes, I very much remember (laughs) (laughs) the spider web days. Yeah. Those were pretty clear. (laughs) Oh yeah. (laughs) You know, I, I don't know. I, I digress a little bit, but I think I'm just speaking from my own heart. I'm I'm definitely too self-critical and to again listen to my students and ask them, what do you guys remember from those years? And it's just all celebration, you know. Uh, so, so do we more. need to do that more. Do exactly. That more. Yeah. yeah. Deep dive. What can you so celebrate that's... today? What did you do? I mean, I got up early this morning. That was you a. Did. <laughs> I was like, girl, I want to go snowboarding. You better get out of bed so we can do this episode. (laughs) Ooh, that three-hour time difference is a challenge sometimes. (laughs) But it felt really good, and it was nice to sit with my cup of tea and be like, look at me, I did this. And and my partner got up, and he got motivated too, so I could make my blanket fort in the bed. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Well, right now, too, is exceptionally rare. We are in the second year of this pandemic. So the memories are very vivid because we were, I think everybody can say March of 2020, we knew what we were doing. We were all at home. 
Yeah, we can <laughs> remember right where we were. <laughs> home. And yes, I I went outside today and, you know, recognized the ground is still frozen, even though the sun is out. And I remembered last year and where I was at in my marriage, where I was at in the ownership of my home, you know, where I was at in this uh, overworked kind of human being that was so thankful to be home because I had felt like I had you been got a home break. 10 yeah. years. <laughs> um, and, and the 365 days of growth that have yes. ensued since that, it's spectacular. And if you're sitting here listening going, well, I don't feel that spectacular about mine, like take a breath and give yourself a moment that it has been a pandemic year. And yeah, um, cut yourself some slack on that one. Yeah. Yeah. I need um, to remember that sometimes. I'm like, gosh, why do I not feel like I'm so great right now? Oh yeah. <laughs> Cause it's been a real difficult, challenging year. Okay. I'm doing, I'm doing pretty great for the circumstances. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, gosh, I just wanted to say three things all at once. Soul mm-hmm. contracts. Um, uh, I, I was told recently with, I was working with Judy and she shared with me that I entered into a because I can't remember the words, but like a soul contract with the COVID virus, you know, like I, Bet we not all just did. me, but we all did. Yeah. And, and you either chose to, to go into it with grace or to go into it with fear. And I definitely went into it with grace. I was one of those people. I didn't want to say it for a while, but I was so thankful mm-hmm. for the pause because yeah. I really needed it to recollect my internal, faith in myself, my trust, my direction, you know, it's like I could have just kept going with this ball that was rolling and I really needed that pause. Um, so for me right now to celebrate, I'm celebrating with all of you guys. I'm like totally going to cry, but I own my own house now. You know, I've, I've moved into a sovereignty I've never known before. I have a super great podcast with one of my best friends ever. Like what? This is, this is awesome. <laughs> so I, I just, life is good. Life is good, you know, and it really, really depended on my attitude. So I hope that as we move across our days today and in the next few weeks, everyone just, you know, tip your chin up to the sunshine and soak it in and be grateful for the light and the spring and the opportunities that are in front of us and the, lessons and past that's behind us and just oh uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh to oh, that yes, yes. Uh-huh. as you say all the beautiful <laughs> things that are coming for spring I just the smell of the Daphne and the flowers on the trees like we're already in bloom here in Portland Oregon and it is mm. it's so glorious even when it's raining buckets like you're like okay this is spring. Here we are. And you can see, we call it liquid sunshine because (laughs) we get so much rain that we need to make a positive spin on it. (laughs) So (laughs) that's my positive spin for the rain is it's liquid sunshine and it is coming, raining down on us. So if you're feeling like you're in the mud and you know, you're getting soggy (laughs) and it's a little bit much (laughs) or it's gloomy. I mean, Take your vitamin D for one. Yes. And then find something to celebrate, even if it is the smallest thing, like a tiny flower. And and mm-hmm. or bring a bouquet into your home. Pick something up at the mm-hmm. store if they're not in bloom at your in your location yet. But mm. Find a way to really honor yourself and pause for all that you've been through this last year, for all the growth that you can see in your life over the years, for the happy, good moments. And also, I like to honor those challenging moments too. Mm. All of the 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 heartache (laughs) or the... The chaos, the interpreted chaos. chaos. Yeah. (laughs) Because... Those moments are what bring change, right? So you can, something like the fire element, things burn down so that Mm -hmm. we get new growth and we're in that season now of new growth. So honor what died off and and give it some real respect and gratitude because that is where the grace comes from. That is how we handle these moments with grace because there have been so many challenges. It's really good to say, yeah, but it really 
turned me in a different direction or it opened up a different part of me or it showed me somewhere I needed to dig deep to clear some past trauma or change my belief system. I mean, we talk about this all the time and it's so nice to be able to say yes and it deserves celebration because mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. <laughs> when when you're talking, it reminds me of what Judy always references my some parts of my life. She says, those are just your rock tumblers, Shelby. You know, you are this spectacular diamond, multifaceted diamond, and you needed the rock tumbler. You know, you don't just, I don't think you don't emerge as a diamond. Maybe I should research this more, but. Well, there's so much gunk on crystals, every single okay. crystal, and they all need to be polished. I mean, we okay. all need that polishing. And I talk about it like almost sandpaper different. And I make mm. the make a symbol with my hands that's like mm-hmm. the rubbing of the fine tuning, the, mm-hmm. the the refining. So maybe that's your um your spirit stick or your your drawing is Who's been your rock tumbler? Which events have been your rock tumbling events? Which people have been your rock tumbling? Which people have loved you so much in a spiritual sense that they showed up not to be your your best friend or your life partner, but your rock tumbler? And you might have pruned that person from your tree and you don't talk to that person anymore, but but take a breath and send them a, a little shout out of gratitude because they did help you. They did remind you. They did push you forward, um, kind of catapulted at some places. I'm sure you're, you're all thinking like, oh, yeah, <laughs> ejection <laughs> seat. Um, but that's that's the good stuff of life. If you, if you didn't have those people, those... Um, uh, those moments, they are yeah. so... They're, they're transformative. And Mm -hmm. I think we're here on this planet to go through big change like that. So we can Mm -hmm. see what's underneath who we really are and grow into who we want to be. Mm -hmm. And those are huge transition (laughs) points. And that's, that's like this whole episode. We're talking about those turning points that like what pulled you to grow in a different way. And, and then remember to pause and celebrate it. Even Mm -hmm. if it seemed like a negative experience, uh, Denise Lynn in her book, Soul Coaching talks about her almost, I mean, she was almost murdered. She was like the whole beginning of her story is she was gunned down and on purpose, like someone tried to kill her and she was in the hospital and she could have looked at that moment of, of almost death as like such victimhood. Right. But this whole transition and what came out of it, this beautiful healing practice of soul coaching that Mm -hmm. those of us around the whole world have done have been because she chose to look at it as a learning experience Mm -hmm. and that, that karma, that person that was brought into her life for that purpose catapulted her in a completely different trajectory for her whole life. And so it can be that dramatic and can be that scary and bad, but it's really about your perspective. And if you choose to celebrate what came out of it, I mean, obviously trauma and, you know, that sort of horrific events are not what we're, we're not glorifying them. We're not making them okay, but we're saying this is planet earth. This is life. This is what, you know, some of us have this karma to go through and, and if you do, then, you know, we honor you for the strength that you have to grow out of it and to learn from it and want to give you the major props. Mm-hmm. That's- I feel like our country right now is in a giant rock tumbler. Um, and we are at this, maybe half of us are in the rock tumbler and the other half of us have the big pruning shears since we're going with all these analogies. <laughs> And we're just really trying to bring so much to light. And I know there's people that can have a barely like stressed out, negative, worried, like what's happening. And then I, on the other hand, I'm like, bring it on. This is awesome. We're bringing it all to the surface. You know, there's just so many issues that were kind of behind the scenes that are now being brought out so we can change them and so we can let go and prune. (laughs) So yeah, I'm excited. I know it's not, there's not a lot of stability in certain places right now and, and we need more change and we need to build a better foundation, but 
we're in the stages of the rock tumbling. We're in that. So I celebrate what's happening right now in our, in our government. I know it, it, you know, take that with a, a peaceful mindset. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You may have different political views, but we all can agree that we need some change and we need mm-hmm. harmony and we're, mm-hmm. we're working towards it in these little baby steps. Some of them are leaps and bounds, but mm-hmm. It's, it's definitely shaken it up and it's requiring us to find our inner balance and, mm-hmm. and look at our belief systems and our values and our perspective on life, because that's, that's what it's showing us that we're, we're, we're not united and we can bring more support to the community and equality and love, mm-hmm. bottom line, love, more love. So balance, this is the. The last thing I wanted to talk about, um, we I did a card draw, of course, before we started our episode, um, and this is Alana Fairchild's uh, Oracle deck, the Lightworker Oracle Guidebook, and I pulled the power of the Divine Masculine, which to me is like the energetics of the get it done, you know, action, action. Um, I think I'm pretty aligned with this Divine Masculine energy. But then I read the card. I'm like, Ugh. so I'm going to share a couple, <laughs> a couple lines. Um, it's time to end the frustration of repeating old patterns. You are ready to break through into a new way of life. Feel inspired, be energized and focus on your dreams and desires. Believe your success is inevitable. I love it. You know, so as we emerge from the winter and we step into this new spring where we can, we can, we've been planting seeds all winter, right? Yes. What I want to do and what, who I want to be. And um, it's time. It's time to take that action. There's big trust in that too. Those seeds, trusting that they're going to grow, trusting that the right energy at the right time is going to nourish them. And it does require action. Mm -hmm. It requires us to stay focused and tune in to our intuition and follow those hunches. Intuition. (laughs) Intuition. Follow it and, and, and act because it's not a passive thing. This living in a spiritual way is not passive. It is very guided by spirit to action. What can we create in the world? What are those seeds that we're planting? What do we need to do to nurture them? Mm -hmm. And it's such an exciting time because we've got so much growth. It's just about to explode energetically. It's really exciting. I love that you brought up the intuition because that's the divine feminine, you know, so finding that balance. I mean, like, like you were just saying, being in a spiritual way is about constantly re- rebalancing, you know, because we walk along life like, you know, there, if you go back to our seed analogy, you plant a seed, it starts growing, we get a hailstorm. Ah, you know, <laughs> you have to be ready for the little chaotic moment and then rebalance. And maybe you have to plant your seed again. Maybe you have to um, build a fence. Maybe you have to put up some boundaries. Oh my gosh, I'm just hitting all of it today. You know? <laughs> I'm like the analogy queen. You can tell I coach kids, right? But so yes, just so so celebrate um, what you've accomplished. Celebrate your dreams and your visions. Celebrate that you have that divine masculine and that divine feminine. And I think we're it's um it's time for an episode on what it's that really coming. means. Oh That'll my probably God. be the next episode. Uh, and but for now, everybody, raise your hands up to the sky. Feel the, the sun on your face, and if it's not there, put a light bulb on. <laughs> Take a shower, and just yes, thank you so much for this alive moment. Thank you for being present and for being conscious in your heart. I say it all the time, and when we do our circles, the seventh direction is you. So that gratitude for just wanting to be the best self that you can be. I just honor all of you. I love all of you. I love you, Alicia. Yay, (laughs) I love you too. Thank you all for listening. Thank you for being with us on this journey. And so many blessings. May so Mm. many blessings come to you in this season of spring. 
Yes. Oh, and weave weave the web you want to live. I had I ha- I know we're trying to add, but I had that spider show up in my book. Yes. <laughs> and that's the medicine of the spider is weave the web you want to live. So that Beautiful. is my goodbye message. Aho to everyone. Yay. Aho. <laughs>